So, so first, I'm ready for you. Ready? <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> so, first things first, Jonathan, how are you? I'm good. I'm pretty good. It's very good to hear. Slightly bit nervous, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a camera in my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a bit weird on Monday morning, yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, there's nothing to worry about. Okay. Uh, before we get into your album, Estrange, Strange, I'd like to jump back to the beginning a little bit. And now I know that your father was a preacher and you kind of grew up in the church. What kind of effect did that have on you musically? Um, let's see, uh, yeah, well, for sure, I mean, you know, just a lot of uh, being, you know, I mean, around church, uh, both at, at, at services, worship services, and at, like, youth groups and things, I mean, you're always, like, singing a bunch of songs, okay, they're kind of, you know, religious songs or whatever, but right. it's, uh, yeah, there was definitely always music, my mother was in the choir, uh, you know, I, actually, I was in the choir as well for a while there, and, uh, did you like it? Yeah, but I was little. I, that was when I was really young. And then, uh, I mean, I kind of stopped going to church uh, once I hit high school, you know, when I was kind of allowed to sort of say, oh, I can't, I can't make it or whatever. And, uh, but, um, but I did. I actually, up, in, up through my early adolescence, I was still going a lot to these sort of um, youth group camp sort of things, you know. Uh, and, it, and it was Presbyterian, so it wasn't like highly religious. It was just kind of a, more like a social, a fun thing to, you know, get, get together with with people your age and, uh, and just hang out and play everybody. A lot of people brought their guitars and we would sit around and play a bunch of uh, songs that were not at all religious, you know? Like, and uh, yeah, so a lot of what I remember learning guitar and things uh, and, and learning new songs from other people really that happened a lot at those kind of places. So in a way, yeah, that definitely had an effect on me. I remember like uh, learning, someone taught me a, uh, uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, uh, it was called, uh, you know, I, I was like, wow, I, you know, I actually finally learned how to play that at some kind of like, you know, Christian uh, youth conference right. thing. You know? So it was quite progressive in a way. And then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, supportive yeah. of creative. Yeah, uh, yeah, college. not at all. Like, I mean, we never really sang Jesus songs or anything okay. <laughs> with those people. No, no, no. So at that time, because I believe uh, it was around uh, age 12 that you picked up the guitar, did you start writing your own songs immediately? N not really, but I do remember, yeah, when I was like 13, uh, kind of... Uh, well, I actually had this sort of fantasy that I that I would you know someday be a famous to you know have an album of greatest hits before I even had anything planned. I already had. I remember I wrote I made this uh, album cover of greatest hits, and on the on the back of it, it had all the albums of that the each song was from. You know, and so I had this whole entire discography that was just invented before I really had songs. I had I wrote down the titles, and they were kind of ideas of songs. But then about half of them, I do remember, I I kind of played just for close friends and they were just sort of joke songs really i mean they were just sort of funny things but uh, i did have this sort of funny idea of like oh maybe someday this will come true a greatest hits album you know? was there a turning point then where the songwriting became more serious yeah um well serious i don't know about serious it's never really become okay. completely serious okay. in that way yeah, I, mean, I try not to take myself actually i i, I would try to avoid I usually try to avoid taking everything too seriously or whatever but um, but yeah I mean I, I remember uh, uh, at some point when I was really playing gigs and, and, and I would just notice people responding to certain songs more than others or whatever and I'm like oh okay and um, and somehow actually through that I, I okay serious not really serious but I, I do do think that I started somehow stumbling onto this sort of sad uh, repertoire, Ooh. sad songs, you know, kind of thing. And uh, and I just somehow, it's, that's sort of stuck, and I just, I didn't really mean to always write, but, but those are the songs that a lot of people responded to when I would play them live. I, rem I remember people coming up, some of the first gigs I ever had, saying to me, oh, like this one guy, I just always remember this guy, you know, hey, I, j I broke up with my girlfriend last week, and I came to the show, I wasn't sure what to expect and everything, and, and uh, he said, I was so yeah. depressed, and I came here, and now I feel really good. You know, after all these sad songs about broken relationships that you just sang, I was like, really? Oh, okay, good. I guess that's good. You know, and then I thought to myself, yeah, that's kind of, you know, that's the way I remember feeling really down and listening to Leonard Cohen songs and, and those kind of things. And when I, yeah, it's, it's, it's something to that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an, a very interesting point because there's, 
been all over the decades. There's been music, quite quite sad music, but that somehow people can can relate to it, and that makes them feel better in a way, which which I find yeah, really yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not. I mean, I I don't think that all my stuff is sad by any means, mm. but I do think it, a lot of it has kind of this somber feel to it, and I don't know. That's just sort of how it came out. Of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just thinking of bands like Nirvana. I mean, it, it's very gloomy, but still people find solace in it in, in a way. So it, it is an interesting, I can't explain it, but it is an interesting movie. Yeah, but I think I think Nirvana, and maybe more Kurt Cobain or something, was, was definitely into, you know, yeah. mellow, acoustic kind right. of somber songs for sure. I mean, right. he, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, but, uh, but so... Um, Around this time, because I, I read you, you played in all kinds of bands when you you were younger. When did you delve into the more folky side of things? Was this around the time where you discovered that people gravitated more to them, or, or you yourself gravitated to more towards the melancholy? Well, it was never. I think my whole life, I've always played sort of a folky style or whatever. Okay. Always okay. finger picking from the beginning. I learned the guitar lesson, so it's always been there as sort of like a. You know, I remember when I first learned how to do the hammer thing where you go, no, you know, you know? <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay, that's a whole new world. And I just, I don't know, I just, just played a lot to where I felt like I had sort of my own little style. And then I, and then I've just always, I mean, I had a few rock bands where I'd play, you know, bass with a slide and crazy right. things like that. But generally it's been my acoustic guitar uh, and, um, and, I, and uh, quite a while ago in Barcelona, I had my first real kind of, well, it was a bluegrass, more of a bluegrass band. And that was, uh, we tried to actually write a lot of songs as if they were recorded long ago, you know, kind of bluegrass style things as well, as, as well as covers. And, and, um, and that, was, that was a great experience because, uh, yeah, it's, it was, I realized, okay, these are also, up, uh, well, murder ballads, that song, but they're really right. upbeat, like, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. So then right. that sort of, sort of, uh, I think uh, progressed into what I later did with Dusty Stray a little bit, especially in the beginning, uh, with kind of you know heavy sounding lyrics with real like you know chink 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 you know mm. kind of upbeat sound or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Where did you? It's it's difficult, I, I suppose, to describe. But where did the inspiration for the lyrics come from? Was it was it more a story a storytelling approach, more a literature type approach, or did it come from from what you saw around you and kind of what you felt inside? Well, I, I, there are a lot of a lot of influences, but um, I, I generally tell people, okay, it's pretty true that um, there's the uh, this this. Um, anthology of american folk music this thing that's of course was like the bible for bob dylan and all these people when it came out in the 50s and and, uh, and it is a really amazing thing it's like six records by harry put out, compiled by harry smith this okay. kind of crazy guy who who just had you know he really wanted to change the world through music that was his whole purpose of doing this he was a sort of a cultist guy and he had a whole numerology thing going with this song has to go after that and they're all songs from the 19 like 1928 to 1934 or something and and they were uh uh there's just so much there and i think about half of those songs really were horribly depressing and murder ballad things and and i i, I just really was so into that for so long and, and obviously that rubbed off on me and and uh, uh, style of Dusty Stray, especially in the beginning when I did more of kind of murder ballad things. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, uh, and the other, the other big influence, I think, was, um, is this uh, uh, writer, illustrator, Edward Gorey, who I liked since I was a kid, and, and, and he doesn't even really write for children. It's more like these really creepy books illustrate this special style of illustration, like old style lithograph, a real, very detailed, very, like black and white drawings and um anyway so i remember from an early age just loving his style of writing and style of humor and and really dark always very dark mm -hmm. but very funny as well so i think that somehow you know stuck onto right. me because i try not i mean i try to put a little humor in, in everything i can when i can you know so it's not too heavy or whatever and uh you know, he's, he's, he's really way up there for like an expression. And I have to say, on the new Dusty Stray album, it's strange, there is a song that uh, is about Edward Gorey. Um, he died not too long ago, and I kind of have this silly tradition of kind of writing songs about some of my favorite artists. And so 
this album, that is Edward Gorey, and uh, it's a song about, um, yeah, a song about Edward Gorey. Yeah, yeah well, I wanted to mention, uh, the song is called Gorey Story, and um, sonically then, because he, he was known as, a, I, I think, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I think as a gothic writer, and, and, and like you say, he had this, this very, very distinctive style of writing and illustration, so how, is that something you try to capture then in the music that you, that you create around it? Yeah, it's strange. I didn't really have any kind of plan. This this particular song, the, uh, yeah, I just I, I did I did have a, a this is when I was in the states. I was living in the states for a while a year ago, and there I met this amazing cellist, a cello player, and she she uh, I had this opportunity to to write some new stuff and with a cellist. I've never had that before. And this particular song was like, yeah, Edward Gorey, that song should have a cello and as the main thing or something. That was just a, a real no brainer. So that kind of developed the song. Thinking of that, and then we played, you know, that that song uh, together and recorded it, and that's kind of what it became. But uh, but also the whole thing with with the Edward Gorey song is that I had a, a, a show in uh, Colorado. And the, this this woman, loved, she just got in touch with me, with me, the booker, and she said, "Hey, uh, I'm crazy about Edward Gorey, and I noticed that your 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 music is so much like Edward Gorey. Well, his birthday is coming up in, next month. Would you like to do a? Should we do an Edward Gorey birthday party show or something?" And I said, "This is just the most." bizarre thing nobody really has had this connection with me like that about Edward Gorey I said yes for sure and I'll even who knows I might even write a song about Edward Gorey for the occasion and so that's really how it started it was kind of a strange thing that it, in an afternoon I wrote that song and then it really and then the recording it took all kinds of uh, through the recording process it kind of went other places or whatever but the basic song was that it was just for that show that I did on Edward Gorey's birthday <laughs>